I'm joined by Gareth. How are you doing, man? I, s I see a new hero, by the way. Uh, never mind. Forget it. I, I didn't say anything. I didn't jinx it. It's not my fault, I swear. Gotta unmute yourself, by the way. In case you... Uh, in case that's the issue. Oh! Oh, there yes. <laughs> I'm using myself in Discord as, like, a double backup. I'm using Push to Talk as well, but... Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I was I was going to scream out Pangolera as well, but I decided to keep it to myself, but it's banned out <laughs> anyway. Uh, this hero pool is pretty heavy on the on the carries, honestly. Like, Anti-Mage, Monkey King, Terror Blade is there. You've got Leshrac as a carry, potentially. Lycan, Alk. It's uh, not too difficult to pick out your supports, but there's some serious push drafts that you could build out of this, right? There's Chen, you've got Lycan, you could add in something, you know, like the Vengeful Spirit, there's Nargisire in there. There's lots of ways to go around this, or you, know, you could look towards maybe uh, a draft with Catch, the Beastmaster, Disruptor, yep. TA, Minus Armor. There's cool little synergies between a bunch of these heroes. You can go full on Zeus Trad, you can go like all out on the magic damage, and uh, you can even maybe look for some sort of combo with the Dark Seer, like if you think about Underlord, Centaur Stomp perhaps. If you want to try and make that work, and, uh, yeah, not the worst hero pool we've ever seen, that's for sure. And um, Execration, taking some time now to analyze it themselves and see which route they want to go. They uh, have yeah. the first pick coming into this, so it's a little bit important to you to get these bans on the money because you don't get anyone anymore after this one. No, I was just about to call like TNC. There's Alchemist and there's Lena in the pool, ban out some heroes of Cuckoo. Terrorblade is another one potentially here, uh, along with maybe the TA, but they go with the, the, the Sam H. Darks here instead, that Synergy hero taken out, which uh, would have done nicely for TNC, whereas Execration, not sure if there are any real signature heroes out there. I mean, you look towards that Anti-Mage and there's not a massive amount to deal with him. You've got, like, Disruptor, you've got... No bat rider, but outside of that, anti mage could have a free game. Hello, Shadow. I'm looking at the Shadow Shaman here, so Link Hex is always gonna be nasty until you get perhaps that uh, Agnum Scepter build up. <clears throat> but for now, Execration is start off with the Beastmaster, very solid, very strong hero. You said it. it gives you that catch, the very strong lockdown, and uh, now with the changes to his Call of the Wild, gets even more utility out of out of that with the random neutral creep that you get at the higher levels, but very quick draft here at TNC with a bat rider Kunkka. Very strong in its own right, a lot of dragging back and forth, a lot of teamfight potential initiation on the solo target. But Execration with the immediate counter pick as well, Vengeful Spirit ready to swap anybody out that gets caught by the bat rider. So the neutral you get from level 4, Call of the Wild, selects a random neutral from Alpha Wolf, Hellbear Smasher, Satyr Tormentor, Centaur Conqueror, and Dark Troll Summoner. So it's only like top tier creeps, yeah. right? Okay. Do they change ones. anything else much about the Beastmaster? I know the Wild Axis um, has become a lot stronger now. Um, with the Wild Axis, you only get the Hawk later. You don't uh, get it right off the bat, and the Hawk's not invisible anymore. So that was the okay. thing. They, yeah, they changed the mechanics around uh, the Call of the Wild and the Wild Axes. Gets... Well, I'm, I'm liking both of these drafts from both teams. They've picked stuns. They have disables. They have ways to catch people and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> like, in <laughs> Captain's drafts so often, we see stuns just slide by. No one picks them. They're like very you know, tunnel vision and focused on their draft and what they want to do with it. There's Raven's TB expected. Yeah. Sam H has his Bat Rider. Nothing out of the ordinary here. But Execration, building up auras, you know, Beastmaster, Venge. I don't know if you could look towards you know, a Bounty Hunter or something along those lines, but this is this is going very quickly now with Leshrac followed through. I wonder if they do want to turn this back into this bit of a Zeus trad. Lycan still on the front. Um, with the Leshrac, with all this AoE, probably don't want to go for, like, uh, Chaos Knight as a carry. Other than that, like... I don't really think you want to go anti mage here either, right? Bunga, Bat Rider, very annoying to deal with, and you have that very solid follow up stun from the Lashrak on any of those. Uh, like, what, what lanes against the Bat? There's nothing in the pool, right? Yeah, oh, that's true as well. Bring in the Riki now. It's almost like you have to have to dodge, go aggro with the Venge, just put the Beastmaster against the Bat, and just make sure that you don't feed. 
But now to Riki, like, I feel like we've seen Riki more often in these couple of days of Captain's Draft than we have an entire yeah. 706. Like, <laughs> what is it with that hero? It's only Southeast Asia, though, right? Yeah. Like, I was looking at uh, pick rates and win rates before this series started. Spirit Breaker has been picked eight times and has, like, 88% win rate or something insane. There's a handful of 100%, so there's Gyro, Pugna, Tinker, uh, all with, like, three games or more with 100% win rate. Everyone else is, like, three picks or less. This, this is across all regions. Yeah. But then you go to Southeast Asia, and all of a sudden, you know, you see things like Tusk, six picks, and he's only won two of them. <laughs> uh, you've got heroes like Shadow Demon, who has 50% win rate across four games. Ricky, three games and zero wins. <laughs> so if we're going by the stats, Execration going to have a difficult time here. Gabby Invoker, sure, it's going to be fancy. They're going to have Forge Spirits with, you know, BM and, and Vengeful Spirit auras. Great. But I feel like TNC have a normal draft, right? They, they have a draft oh, yeah. of heroes they're comfortable with with heroes they've run together before previously whereas execration they're going to have to rely more on uh you know, spur of the moment initiation execution with stuns into sun strikes with their movement around the map converting kills into towers with the summons they get but it's oh, no. nowhere near as kind of clear-cut and easy on the bright side it's uh it's better for them than uh, some of the other drafts that we've seen in terms of just actually being able to convert. Like sometimes you just end up with heroes that cannot take towers if their life depended on it. But in this case, if you're in a team fight on the other side of the map, you should always be able to muscle them down uh, between those auras that you mentioned. So it's going to be a lot down to the Riki to set that up in the early parts of the game, starting to snowball off of that. Tim's is probably going to match him, try and prevent that. And, uh,. Get the same thing going for TNC. Um, you also have Raven on a Terror Blade. He should be fairly self-sufficient against the Beastmaster. Maybe freeing up the Kunkka also. At the same time, I say that Kunkka actually <laughs> played by Cuckoo now. He swapped with uh, 1437 on the track. I wonder if they're swapping to get cosmetics. I feel like the <laughs> track should be played core. Yeah. Like, Kuko like started off picking that, picking that hero, and I was like, all yeah. right, sure, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like, Punka as a core doesn't, doesn't really. So... It looks it looks like that's what's happening. Cuckoo stays yeah. on the Kunkka. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, Maybe. I could understand it if it was like Kunkka and Leshrac as the two supports. That makes sense. You've got set up stun for 1437. Yeah. But Leshrac's going to have a difficult time, it feels like actually getting ready to battle. They've got Tims to slow people down, Reflection from Raven, but outside of that, you're going to have to gank into the Kunkers lane, it feels like. Yeah. Maybe it's just that they feel that Lushrag is not a good lane matchup against the Invoker, with the Riki also out and about. I mean, neither's Kunka. That's a thing, right? I mean... I guess you can go, like, Tidebringer route. It also limits you in other ways going uh, going into the mid game. Huh, curious. We'll see how that works out for TNC. They've probably lost one series two and one today. And uh overlays. I, I remembered guys. I remembered. Draft overlay on for a little bit there. <laughs> but yeah. And even invokers laughing at you. God damn it. At the very least it's not one of these super cagey ones. Can't really get, make those happen anymore with the new drafting screen. Thankfully. No more prison screen. Yeah. So, Tim's on his bounty, getting through a couple of his shadow walks here. Not gonna... Oh, he got spotted. He did. Yep. He came out like a split second too early, and uh, Lumic does know the bounty's around. Looks like they're gonna try this contest of the bounty room to get the double here for the dire. Uh, might be actually be able to find if Tim's is quick on his fingers, and he cannot. So two for two, and they have to pop the sentry down. They're looking to try and get the scale straight off the bat. They need a little bit of extra damage, but <laughs> he works into Sunstrike! Gabby gets the first blood from across the map, and this is the best case scenario, especially if you're forced to plop down a sentry off the lane here for this kind of an early kill. Giving it to an invoker, giving him off to a really good early start. Exactly what you want. Oh yeah, he didn't get a good block off, but it doesn't matter. QQ didn't either, so... Tidebringer level 1 up against his Invoker mid. We'll see how this works out, but this Tim's bounty, even if, even though he's died, can still, you know, roam around this map and cause all sorts of havoc, as Beastmaster gets hit by a split earth. 
Yeah. And body blocks involved there as well. R R. What the hell? He's pathing. He misclicked. Walked up north for a little bit. Clicked on the map or something. Yeah, that's oh, unfortunate. That's, that's a feels bad moment right there. That kill should not have happened really. Oh, I don't that's know, maybe uh, they kill him anyway, but it's... Uh, that's a first game of the day kind of move. Yeah. That's a whoopsie. Well, Ranger Potato's back up here now to just console his friend, but so is Tim. Is it gonna go again this time? Oh well, he dodges a split off. Still being slowed down, body blocked by his own creeps, under the tower, they're committing for this, the fairy fire is enough to keep him safe, but he's forced probably back to base now, unless he just wants to stay around munching a few tangos. He did nearly kill Tims, but Agra switched over onto the last rack, so Ricky couldn't find that nice little kill as they tried to dive this tier 1. And you look at the other side of the map, right? Sam H is like freely bullying the Rubik. He's stealing pulls. He's stealing stacks. Doing all of this really annoying offlane nonsense and getting some good levels and a, you know, some CS, at least in this early stage of the game. So it's left this mid lane as a natural 1v1, which Kunker is winning in denies 5 and 6, uh, removing a lot of Gabby's farm potential here. And yeah. Kunker's just throwing out torrents. Uh, okay. Bad right under the following, actually. Lumic and James running him down, putting an end to his shenanigans. And now Lumic with a haste drone. Uh, can I set up something for Cuckoo? Sunstrike was just used. Gabby was throwing that out as an insurance. But the now career is coming. Uh, this indeed. 30 seconds, we might just wait until it out upgrades. Meanwhile, X into Torrent in mid. Gabby is in a lot of trouble himself. He will fall. And uh, this mid lane also an absolute disaster. ENC winning that handily as well. Not just in terms of CS, but also in terms of kill advantage now. Yeah, and this Rubik has to stay bot. Again, we're looking at this Bat Rider against two heroes that don't survive well against Bat. Invoker's getting ganked by the Bounty Hunter. The map is just opening up here for TNC to roam as they please. And at some point, they could even leave the TB alone up here and rotate the Leshrac, you know, in the next 30 seconds or something. 1437 could quite easily just swing himself from this top lane down to bot towards mid, maybe look for a kill, because you've got X Torrent at this point. Cuckoo's level 4 with a 1 2 1. Samage again. Uh, Shane your stuns a little bit as a result. The Sunstrike will not connect. Samage will be able to fly it off. Meanwhile, X Torrent to mid. Once again, Tim's making wrap around. That's how they're out of the Slow. Gabby. No X. No slows, that's ice water, doesn't really do anything at this point, but might just be enough. As I say that though, Cuckoo, with a bit of old Tidebringer. Raging Potato trying to turn things around, but he's just not quite as strong as the Bounty Hunter at this stage. He's jumping across, cancelling the self and Kunkka, so... That's a value right there, into the torrent. Oh, is being chased by 1437. Oh god. Shouldn't Ooh. die. But it's Perfect. closer than you'd really want, and bounty runes get stolen away as well, so Beastmaster doesn't get his hands on any of that lovely extra money. One kind of saving grace here is that James is doing exceptionally well bot lane, farming away. They've killed Sam H off, you know, once, forced him out of lane twice on top of that. So these two ranged heroes are actually doing a reasonably good job of kind of harassing Sam H back and making sure they've got stick charges ready to go. They're not going to get just run out by the Batrider. But maybe expect now the bounty to start making some maneuvers down towards the bottom lane. Well, Vicky is certainly sticking around mid. The sentry walls are on. Still is one of his own, but no tango to uh, punch away it quickly. Meanwhile, on bottom, Sunstrike was coming out again. Not sure if that hit or not. It's same. Uh, in any case, Sam H will still be run down by a bit of napalm stacked up on James. And there's a Tim's making this play without the Bat Rider, maybe not as reliable of a skill, even though you are level 3, so instead he's just going for some CS. They just have so much damage on this bot lane, and Sam H is not respecting this at all. Yeah. You know, level 3 Magic Missile, they've got Phase Boots, Venge, they punch for a lot. Try and go for the skill, they have the sentry held on to a Raging Potato, and uh, yeah. Points up Fate Balls, three points up in a Magic Missile. Couple of extra right clicks. No respect for the carry Venge. Yeah. TNC kind of feeding away a couple of deaths down this bottom lane. Tim's is like, screw this, okay, they've placed a sentry there. I'm going to make some plays mid. Gabby, not quite hit by the torrent, but Tim's is still lurking around 
in the shadows while they've rotated 1437 here as well. You know, leaving Raven top is fine. He's level 5, he's got his Metamorphosis ready to go if he's you know, ganked by someone. Not really under too much pressure from Ricky Beastmaster. So they just want to try and kill Gabby over and over yeah. again. Delay this Hand of Midas, delay the period of time where Invoker is, you know, gaining items to get strong. Pugnet is out at this point, but now X into Torrent, into Boat, into Split Earth. Even with DP reaction, Lumic cannot get there in time, so just straight up dive the tower. They cannot use the, mal uh, the Edict to get some damage on with all the creeps coming back and the Force Bird also still sticking around. But as I said, they got what they came for, they got the kill, and now an Invis rune down bottom, not spotted out by the Radiant side. They see that no one's mid. But can they make that connection? James might actually be in trouble. He's sticking around defensively here, teeping away, and TNC are not quite ready for that positioning. They make his way up top to help out. One for one trade up here while that was happening. Now looking for more. Terrorblade though, pretty damn tanky. They need the magic damage and they get it yes, as well from the nukes, but the Sunder turn things around. Metamorphosis is still going. No, James is the one in trouble. Verify keeps alive. The body rocks from Raging Potato. Just enough. That could have turned out very, very badly here. They still lose the tower, though. What a back and forth. I mean, that, that TP timing from James at top was yeah. unreasonably close. TNZ nearly had the vision to get the X, but they've got vision on Gabby. Two observer wards mid, putting a lot of emphasis on this middle lane, and especially where the invoker's going to be you know, sitting and farming these two jungle camps. They know they need to shut him down to make sure that this... Uh, late game doesn't get completely crushed by a Gabby Invoker. You see everything uh, that's going on in this mid lane. And now, Swap coming in. Cuckoo, let's still get caught here. Gets the boat off. And that with a rum actually going to help him out a little bit, but not enough. 1437 Tim's trying to ch uh, trade this out a little bit. They get the dust, the Sunstrike off the mark. He's going to have to chase Tim's down the old fashioned way with an extra nuke. This carry Venge is just owning everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Level 3 magic missiles slaying everything. Like, sure, you've got TB at top of the net worth, but the Vengeance Invoker, then you, know, you look at the next two are the two dire heroes, but this game is a game of no one is farming. Everyone is fighting. Everyone is trying to kill other people. Even the Batrider has, like, a stack here for himself, but taking this isn't the simplest of things. With a raw ready for RR, maybe they set up for something on Sam H here. Not a matter now. Firefly is still half duration left. He should be able to make it across to the other side, unless he gets roared, and he is right now. Sun strike off the mark actually. Sometimes a bit hard to target with them flying like that, but an extra swap into stun, one for three certain. Gets the stun off himself, split off, connects onto James. But now the next one's just a casual chain feed, but maybe we'll space created. The boat hits on two. Double kill for Cuckoo. And now they're looking for more. Another X available. They just need to find the vision inside. Raven also looking to manage some more heroes. And uh, not seeing anyone until just now. James. Go straight for a turn. X on level two doesn't have the range. Actually, catch him that far out. So they kill the Ricky and the Beastmaster, but that's a lot of commitment. Metamorphosis, a TP from your TB. The Kunker rotates here as well. They kind of even out the fight, but I don't know. Execration are after such a great early start. If they can keep this up, then you've got to be kind of afraid as TNC. But uh, if, T if TNC can you know balance things out, just make sure the status quo is them. <laughs> Breaking even in fights, taking the tier 1 bot lane, trying to get some extra vision into this Radiant jungle just to watch for the farming patterns of Gabby. I still favor them going into kind of, you know, mid to late game with this Raven TB. Yeah. But it, it's so hard to say when, you know, Venge Beastmaster on one side with Invoker, they, they've got not just a lot of magic damage and lockdown and control, but they've got tons of physical pushing power as well into towers yeah. with Ford Spirits, the summons, the, the auras. It's not clear cut at all. Uh, execration has the kind of lineup that can just escalate any sort of situation extremely fast into even more gold, more objectives, more presence on the map. And uh, TNC, they have to be wary of that. They have to make sure that they do not get punished like this. And now, Tim's caught on the one side, the raw on the other on the terrible blade. There's a Sunder available. Bring down Tim's first, and now uh, three heroes walk down Raven, swap back. Need to save the stun until they can kill him, and that's exactly what they do. The boat coming through. The stun a little bit too late, even though it will connect. 
will not turn into trades. What the hell was... Uh, Ricky solo kills Lash up at top. Oh, Bounty okay. Hunter is still level 3, closing on level 4. You get your Hand of Midas on the Invoker. Execration is still keeping this tempo up. You know, the net worth lead, very misleading here, you know. A slight lead here for TNC, a slight lead now switches across to Execration, very balanced in, you know, the kind of metrics. But, oh, Raging Potato, are you dusted? Oh, oh. Or is he? Away, though. He's across. Still being slowed down by the dust, and now, nice little push back from the flame rank. His magic wand was in his, in his stash back home, unfortunately. <laughs> Lumi, still the axe, actually, that's pretty useful. Be able to make some plays happen with that, as well as the invis that he still has from the Shadow Walk. And yeah, he's gonna initiate onto the Shrag. James with a follow just gonna burst him down. Sunstrike, not even needed. Bottom lane, same time, RR. He's actually still pretty damn fast as his slows expire. Stick charges, turn things around, does have the roar. They do need the vision though, and the Riki does not carry any dust or anything. Oh, Tim's. Will be able to survive that ordeal. And Terra Blade's still mm. farming now. No reveal. Bounty needs so many levels. Ricky's level 7 and Bounty's level 4. Pretty shows. That's another free kill that Raging Potato is missing out on. <laughs> <laughs> now they have a dust on Tim, <laughs> so if they want to try and uh, be cheeky. Throw the dust, but now R comes as well. They want to go for the skill. They have some uh, more creeps coming through. Raven with the Sunder early. Still gets stunned up. Couple of right clicks. Torrent and the boat turning things around. TNC. The right place at the right time. And they're the ones who have the dust. Tim's almost falls again to another jump from Raging Potato, but eventually he'll be tracked down by 1437's AoE. Top lane at the same time is being pressured. Sam H showing off the blink dagger here. Gets the lasso off. Lifted up into the air, James still alive, but now gets taunted, X goes down the stun, but he's sitting in the fire, trying to swap himself out, and... Don't tell me he survives this here, Sam H, there it is, he finds him with the extra vision from Napalm, the also X back, Lumic. It's, uh, another X, another couple of right clicks, very hard to get away at this point. Just two X two after X after X. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, here's, here's TNC getting into the stride of things, right? This is them reacting. Making sure to split the map as much as they can so the five man from Execration can't happen with the uh, four heroes ganking and then the Invoker Sun striking from long range. They get these two kind of scattered fights. One down towards the bottom lane where Beastmaster Ricky tried to go in onto a TB, countered out by you know, Bounty. Other heroes arriving, then they swiftly TP top where the Kunkus sets up with you know a massive amount of X's over and over again to kill the Venge and then the Rubik straight after. It's a great sequence of events from them. They've taken a little bit of, you know, the foot off the pedal in terms of zoning out this invoker, no longer have deep wards watching him farming, nothing really aiming towards the mid lane, but that tier 1 mid is definitely going to be something that they look towards in the coming minutes here. As Gabby throws out the meteor just to farm the mid wave, but TNC, they're, they're all gathering. Oh, that's a swap, that's a stun, they're gonna go for the skunker. Kuku quite tanky at this point, but the Sunstrike will be enough if he just stands there. Lifted up into the air, Troll to try and turn things around. Sam H, gonna look to try that extra bit of damage onto James, and he will find it with the pathing in this general area. Gets X back himself from uh, from the Rubik. Oh, there we go, Courier. Uh, <laughs> oh, he gets oh, it! Oh, no! Oh, it's so full as well. The shield, that did nothing. Last didn't last long enough, so that was like Sage's Mask, Drums Recipe, Walls, Smoke, TPs. Uh, a bunch of utilities stuck on those courier for three minutes now. Uh, for sure. I'm not sure what TNZ were thinking there. They wanted the tier one, but they kind of played aggressive. Like, Kunker gets swapped, he gets killed. Leshrak tries to chase in for the kill on Venge, looks like he has it. Then Batrider wants to secure that kill. And just one by one, they're, you know, getting sucked into this battle, which Execration hold the vision advantage, the high ground. But I think TNC want to go again. They're, they're five manning mid. They've got a smoke on the bounty. They've got blink lasso on the bat rider. If they're the ones that can jump and find the pickoff, they can easily snowball that one hero advantage into something huge, which is likely going to be a team fight win and a tier one. It's going to take some really sick outmaneuvering from Execration to come back in this team fight. There we go. Dust to start off with. They're trying to settle for target. It is the Rubik Raven. The Metamorphosis part. They're going to have plenty of damage to work that out. 1, 4, 3, 7, taking care of the creeps, and, well, look at now they have, they have, okay, that's the boat coming through, Axe, gonna hit, 
Only on the base master, track coming through on him as well. Throws on the robots. Turn rate slowed at all. Another X, another torrent. To be able to bring him down, but the soundtrack turns this around. Damage walks out of it just in the nick of time. That's two for the price of nothing. And James, once again, this X. It's impossible to retreat from this if Kunkka is still alive. So add another one to the tally. Got the tower, they got three kills, they got tracks, they got everything that they wanted. As long as TNC are the ones starting, one kill means, you know, two or three or four kills. They get the tier one as well. Um, it's it's so hard for Execration there to disengage fully and not get sucked into that battle. They would have, like, the Venge gets hit by the dust, so they immediately know that TNC are in this jungle, right? Venge sees the debuff happen, retreats away back towards the tier two. Rubik gets caught, and they still wanted to sit around the tier one mid and try and defend it, but TNC were just on their, you know, full warpath, running forward and finding pickoff after pickoff. This this X into Torrent, or just the just the X mark, you know, the, the cooldown, and the uptime of it is ridiculous. Yeah. Eight second cooldown, four second delay in enemies. Torrent in the boat also being such a low cooldown, it's already level two, so it's, what, 50 seconds? They can keep doing that. The only limiting factor is perhaps Raven and his metamorphosis, which still very, very, a very long timer, so that's main source of physical damage, but uh, I want to make it up for that in terms of magical damage right now, between the Bat Rider and the Lashrak. Now, smoke up though, Execration, they want to try and find something themselves. The Axe comes through, Sam H uh, will be brought back here uh, <laughs> by his own teammate eventually. Eight seconds, there we go. It looks like they yeah, just want to settle for the tower. Got the tracks starting to be thrown out. The X on the other way. Lumic throws down some tracks of his own as he stole that from the bounty. Keeps his job. Where's the X? If Cuckoo can get an X here. Uh, there it is, I think, on to Lumic. Torrent comes through as well. Throws out a lift on the track. Lasso on the back. The roll to try and turn this around. So a bit of a split fight. Sunstrike in the back will finish up Sam H. One for trade, the boat comes through up at the top as well, another X to make sure it connects. Another track, another kill. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, 1437 falls, makes a trade out of it. Tim's still on the run, he's chasing with Gabby with a short reach tornado into the meatballs. Actually gonna secure the kill. Together with the Rage Potato who claims the last hit, he's gonna get X back. Tracked up now as well. It's gonna wear off they soon, cannot, so they can't chase him. Yeah, they cannot chase him down, so that'll be the end of it. A great play with a smoke screen and that tornado meteor. You know, it's what level one Wex, and he still manages to combo it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty like short the tiniest, and, uh, tiniest range tornado ever. Yeah, pretty like short tornado, but still gets the job done. This little Didi Kunga, just waiting for someone to show up, they can cleave, but fortunately not the case. But, but yeah, that, that split fight with Sam H. Uh, like there were three different fights happening, right? Sam H with the bound, uh, the oh beastmaster up towards the north. As is Ricky okay? Well played yeah. actually. Yeah, he's he's dodged that axe track back. Still being dusted up. Still sitting in the fire. Yeah, cute play, but not enough ultimately. Plenty of detection. But yeah, there's like Lashrak mid fighting the Venge Invoker. Then there's Batrider with like the beastmaster and Ricky. Then you've got the Kunker and the Terrorblade trying to chase down a Rubik, a Rubik. And they kept having to swing from one side of the fight to the other as TNC couldn't really, you know, continually chase and turn that one hero advantage into more. Uh, quite as easily this time, so it was good maneuvering by Execration just to try and split up the fight as much as they could to catch that Batrider with this Beastmaster who you know, has gone for this Necro 2 build. Yep. Even more summons. Two strats, here we go. Already has that maxed out uh, Call of the Wild, so that's why we see the Dark Troll Summoner sitting around. So we can also summon some Skeletoons. And uh, yeah, this push is actually quite sizable up in the top lane as a result. So this has to be responded to. And 137 is already there, gonna get rid of a lot of these creeps. So swap back here onto Conquer. If they can get the skill, this will be big. The Sun Strike on the money. And they can indeed. 1437 has to run away, but it gets roared up. Next one on the list. And uh, the big old Hellbear with the celebratory clap. Forcing out a glyph. Meanwhile, on the other side, Raging Potato, he was tracked up, so Sam H brings a little bit of a present to Rick. What? Your track expired? It expired? Oh no. <laughs> I mean, the tornado completely missed. Uh. But Raven forced the TP away. Batrider has to retreat as well. That top lane fight was a disaster for TNC. 
Yeah. Is that track stolen? No, it's uh, Shadow Walk stolen by the Rubik. But yeah, they were setting up for something big there with, you know, Kunkka coming in to start with Leshrac there. They wanted to TP more people in, but they were blown up so quickly, you know, did not expect the Beastmaster and Venge to just be able yep. to nuke and control someone. Uh, you know, within a matter of seconds, there was no real recourse for TNC to continue their setup and start a fight. So then they're stuck in this position where they're, they're losing heroes top, so they've got to try and make a fight bot lane. They go for this kind of aggressive move on a Ricky with your Batrider Blink Lasso. Not ideal, but best case scenario in the kind of situation you put yourself in. And things slipped away from there. But I, I still feel that one, one, like whoever, gets the, whoever gets the initiation <laughs> is able to snowball a fight from there on. But Execration have a more difficult time of splitting fights and making sure that they're the ones to not get caught, because TNC have a lot of catch. Creation is starting to become more and more powerful. It's a Nick of 3 now. We've seen the Invoker just being very adept with the Sun Strikes. Just provide that extra bit of burst damage to silence. Well timed, so Bound Tenter will be a free kill, because they have dust now. Uh, uh, that seems good. And uh, you also just picked up the uh, the Agnum Scepter after the Yules on Gabby, so start making more plays within the team fight as well to just uh, mix up the math a little bit. Try and maybe counter initiate and start these kind of plays. Meanwhile down bottom, this also helps Cuckoo. Not quite there just yet. The last right click with the dust to make sure that they keep the vision. We'll do that. James swapping back, trying to TP out. That'll be stopped. But you accept the into the stun from the Shrek. Oh, the stun actually misses. James can still fight a little bit more. Do some damage to 1437, but no one is there to actually convert it into kill. RR coming through now, though. Rage Potato joining the party. They have Nets, they have all the lockdown in the world. Sunstrike in the back. Actually finishes up the Shrek. Yep. In the middle of freaking nowhere. What is. Gabby just <laughs> launches the Iron Cannon, sees the Lashrek yeah. coming, snipes him as he's trying to walk back into the fight. And in the end, what? They lose the Venge and they get three kills in quick succession there? Yeah. Uh, I mean. You get the bounty kill on the Vengeful Spirit, maybe, but outside of that, not looking too good for TNC. Now we're talking just about trying this to force these fights. It, it feels like just tr they're trying to force these fights with not enough yeah. heroes. They come in with like two or three, and they're like, "What? Right, we can set up here, then bring more people in." But the speed at which Execration are playing and executing here, you know, Sam H is in the back looking for a backstab, but there's RR ready and waiting with a roar, and they turn around there, they kill another here. Execration, you know, wasting any time here again. They're going straight for the Kunkka, bursting him down before he can even get any spells off, and that's a big staple of teams in this team fight. I'm gonna try chase now. Raven comes through with the Metamorphosis, with the slows. Should be able to find. Ah, oh, that's a track kill there. Everyone else still on the run. Raging Potato and Gabby both tracked up, but they're far enough away. You did get the Centaur stomp with the, the with a Centaur Beastmaster summoned, but yeah. not quite enough to save his life. Thinking about chasing more, but yeah. But yeah, again, they get the one kill, but. Is that really worth with this kind of momentum that Christian get, especially if you can find a skill on the track as well? Yield Scepter, no Sunstrike, any extra <coughs> extra damage. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the map, that was yeah, Rage Potato and James. Sunstrike coming in now. A miscommunication, perhaps, but they should still be able to get the kill. There it is, Rage Potato. On a killing spree, actually. So this Riki, very effective in this game, not just in terms of getting intelligence and finding people, but also in terms of doing damage. Execration are running like a quad core lineup here. The Avengers slips, you know, away from one, and the Ricky kind of shifts up from four, and then there's the Beastmaster who's a three technically, but has so much farm, he's, you know, <laughs> close to the Kunker. And then there's the Invoker just, you know, racing ahead the rest of the team. Execration in <laughs> an amazing spot now, and it's, and it's getting towards that period where Invoker is very, very scary. He's got the double four spirits, they've got the push power, there's one tier two remaining, which is down at bottom for the Dyer. Roshan opens up for the Radiant. This chase has to pay off. Don't go for the Rubik, they go for the Rick instead, but he's dodging that X again. He's still being tracked up. Keep it up as well. That sure not bouncing another X with the four star forward, despite the jumps, despite everything. Big potato, can he do it again? He can. And now the turn on play from Gabby. Tornado EMP, gonna bring down Raven. He does have Thunder. Available, but can he get it off? He can indeed. And one of the teammates, one of the seven, is going to be targeting now the Warp still. Meanwhile, Cuckoo and Sam H in front. They can brawl a little bit. Gabby dragged back by the flame break, but still pretty fast on his feet. James still alive too, so they only still lose Riki. Oh. Never mind. The cleave from the Tidebringer finishing up James. And now, 
Well, in comes our really uh, <laughs> There's a cleanup. Cleanup crew here. Lumic also wants to be a core here in this game. Mana boots, but no further control to prevent the blink, so... Another one of these very scrappy fights, but TNC, they just wanted the Riki kill. But they had to dive all the way across the map, and they still lose two of their heroes to make it happen. That's the thing, right? You look at that fight, Terrorblade, sure, he gets a, a decent chunk of change from it, but Kunkka dying again, and only really getting a Venge kill. That's the only significant kill that comes out of this for <laughs> TNC. Execration just never, ever letting up on this aggression. At, at least this is a TNC team that's fighting across on the enemy side of the river. You know, if that fight happened anywhere near their base, they likely lose a tier 3 or you know, some structural damage, at least, to their base. Yep. But they're going to go for another aggressive play here. They need to get this Batrider involved as quickly as possible. This Blink Lasso is important as fuck. Like, you have to catch the Venge or the... Inv like, the trouble is, if you go Invoker, he's going to get swapped, right? Yep. Uh, okay, you're going to you're going to get the Rubik. Fine, cool. That, that's a kill. Not the kill you would have wanted, but maybe this allows you to Roshan. That looks like Execration. Don't want to give it to them without uh, some sort of contest anyway. It's falling pretty quickly though. I uh, don't really think that they have the best tools to actually contest it. Rainy Potato with the silence is trying to finish up Tim's first, but slightly misplaced on a smoke screen. Goes into his ultimate, but it's enough to give Gabby and Rodin raw. They're just delaying. Dire Courier dies, and they're still fighting. 1437. Almost dies to James. He dodges the boat. A couple more right clicks. Missing up hills, and now they're in trouble. Raven decides to turn things around on them. Gabby blows a few heroes up, though. Yields up into the air. They're trying to bring him down, but he's still fast and goes walking. Now the rest of the team looking for the cleanup. Sandwich slowed down by the Diffusal Blade. Ah uh ah. -uh. Right clicking away. He's still flying across up to the high ground. So we might be just fine the because they're looking for more. Yeah, they're looking for Raven. Where's uh, Scott like? He actually got Gabby? Yeah, Ga I, I looked at right. So Gabby was invis with Ghostwalk, tracing okay. Raven back the whole way, following him up to the shrine. And I was like, okay, they've got vision on the TB. All they have to do is ignore the Batrider, bring the Beastmaster along, bring the Ricky in, bring the Rubik in, kill the TB, and it's fine. I looked away for a second at the bat, and then Gabby had died, so I assume yeah. he came out of Ghost Walk and just got right click to death? That's I mean, because there's, I mean, there's Raven a, does a good amount of damage. There's, there's a sentry ward there next to the shrine, so yeah. maybe Gabby just got baited and caught unawares. You know, that sentry could have yeah. been a great tool for TB just to be like, oh cool, Invoker, draw him in a little bit, turn around, kill him with that Diffusal Blade Purge. Yep. That's been what happened because Thunder was not used or anything, so. Raven didn't really drop low, and now again, TNC, no one to let up, this Roshan is still very much alive and kicking the smoke. Oh, that rotation was kind of scattered out by the scan, but maybe they didn't exactly know what direction is in. Raging Potato is gonna tank the gang this time around. The rest of Execration abandoning this, abandoning this top lane push, only having um, the creeps taking that over, because they can, they have to try and contest this Roshan, they don't want to let this go. Down to just below half health, can get some extra help with the minus armor. Gabby also throwing in tornadoes. TNC dodging that out as best they can. They also have Kunka bat right at the ready. This roll from the side, Sunstrike almost bring down Lushrak. You'll have to up on the high ground. Meanwhile, the swap in Tim's going to be able to bring him <laughs> down. Uh, the most yeah. important thing is Roshan's still alive. He's still this alive. This is now contestable. Oh, what from the seven? He almost dies here to the axes. And there it is. They're going to jump in. Die against Roshan. Aegis can't fall. Hot my Raven. Gabby, though, with big spells in. Is it going to be enough? He's caught in the middle. Yule Scepter up. They get Kunkka. That's about it. Four stars galore. Oh. Turns around. <laughs> but uh, turns speed slow from the sticky napalm. Just means that TNC get the icing on the cake, the big ol' kill on Gabby, and now the two perhaps on the cards here if they can push out the mid lane tower and Raven uh, mid -lane. Terror Blade. Yeah. This guy is too strong. Manta Diffusal Hurricane Pike, he's got Aegis, Lincoln Sphere is complete back in the stash. He's got a DD rune up at the top spot if he spots that and goes and you know kills some heroes. James is starting to fall off the you know trifecta of hit the three heroes in the middle there for the Radiant team, you know, Beastmaster, Ricky, and Venge. We were kind of complimenting in their uh, nice little spread of net worth, the distribution of farm there between them, and it, it was working out for a long time. But if Invoker is unable in a team fight 
to completely control this Terror Blade and just, you know, win with a combo, get two or three kills with a big Tornado Meter Deafening Blast combo, then the net worth on Gabby isn't as useful as all of the time you've expended getting the net worth onto Gabby, right? Yep. And Cuckoo is still scaling this Kunkka. He's finding farm through these fights, closing in on a Daedalus now. <laughs> well, classic build, Shadow Blade, Daedalus. Even with the Sidebringer can do already, just imagine him starting off a fight like that with a big old crit. You gotta get a bit lucky, but can be devastating. Execration. They got a field of pressure here. And oh, what's the way back into this? Trying to continue with, with pickups of their own, like perhaps a uh, uh, Beastmaster has the blink, so blink roll into Sunstrike, something like that. And they've looked for this the entire time, Raging Potatoes uh, doing the Ricky things, but TNC, they're not really splitting up all that much. Don't really have a reason to with Aegis in hand, the lane's pushed out quite far and wide. They can get this tier 2 easy peasy. And uh... Let's push high ground. Yeah. Catch someone with bat. That is the Rubik. Pretty good hero to get, after all. I mean, you can do quite a few shenanigans, but now, Tornado, MP, Gabby. They're pretty good high ground defenders, no creeps. Backdoor region has been disabled though, so Raven is still going ham. Meanwhile, Dragon Potato in the back is gonna get the kill onto Tim's Raw as they swap in another. That is Sam H going down, so TNC. A bit of damage to the tier 3, but it'll lose a couple of heroes. Now, they're looking for more Rage Potato. Gabby's speeding forward, but you can see too fast on retreat. Uh, good synergy there with the swap into Roar and Bat really did stop that push in. Or else TNC likely just wait out and hold that metamorphosis for the fight that ensues after. Oh, this this game is just so awkward. <laughs> like, it comes down to whether this invoker can solo like solo, solo win everybody. a team fight. <laughs> solo everyone. Uh, like of course there's like swap and raw plays, there's Ricky who's causing havoc in the back end, but the damage, the damage is the big thing. And Invoker holds the majority of the damage here in this kind of mid to late game portion for execration, whereas TNC it's spread across not just the T B and the Kunkka, but the Lesh Rack. This yep. 1437 Lesh does huge amounts of damage. There are, what, no BKBs on the Radiant team? So all of this magic damage is just pumping straight through from the Lesh into the faces of Execration, and they, they can't counter it without buying BKBs. All they really have is the Null Field from the Rubik to try and mitigate it somewhat, but... Not really feeling like a lot at this point. Alright, Butterfly completed on a Terrorblade. How do you kill this Raven? I don't think you do. Uh, I mean, he has Lincolns now, right? So yeah, you can't just go in and roar him. You have to, I, I don't know, like... Buy a Halberd. Link, Halberd, yeah. roar. I oh, mean, like, Venge, God, that you don't Venge, die. Venge, <laughs> Ag oh yeah, Venge is buying Ags. Okay, that's gonna be it. Yeah. So you Venge, Ags, a uh, swap to pop the Lincolns. You roar, and then you swap again 10 seconds later. Bring the TB into the middle of... All of the Beastmaster summons and hope that you drain all of his mana and that he dies. It's gonna require some fancy footwork here from Execration. But even Blue then, he's gonna just sunder you. Like. Yeah, like. You have to keep him controlled up the entire way, essentially. Ages is expired at the very least, so you have that. The entirety of TNC. I mean, bottom lane is pushing across the river, middle lane as well. Execration having issues just uh, even getting any mileage out of their pushing, split pushing power because they're re really scared about splitting, now, splitting up, and you can definitely understand that against the Batrod as well. I could say about the Riki, alright. Sure, how much that'll do? It'll do something. What was the Ricky's win rate? What did you say? Like zero percent. Yeah. Uh. yeah, it's been a tough one. Sam H does get revealed. Ricky just bounces away with a blink dagger. But with Aegis gone, TNC have to be a little tentative now with their fight moving forward. Sure enough, Raven is is big. He's bad, but he's not entirely invulnerable. And if he does go down in a team fight, sure, Execration have to dump a lot into it. But that could be the swing factor they need. 
just to get that advantage as they're the ones now smoking out of the base looking for a fight while TNC don't have an Aegis anymore. Invoker, still level 23, would love to have that tornado cooldown or even just the like AO AOE Deafening Blast is super good against illusion heroes like Terrorblade having that disarm up against them. But tornado to stop the push is you know, likely the better one. They have some vision up on the side ground, so they're to try and use that to wrap around. They see the X. Cuckoo coming back from a quick trip to the base. Now, whoa! They, what? No reveal. I don't believe. Now it's the lasso bringing Riki almost up to the high ground. They should be able to just finish him up regardless. That did backfire really hard. Okay, I'm going to tell you now. Beastmaster has a gem. Okay. He, do he does, okay, yeah. So I don't okay. know what that was all about with the Vend swap, and I, I guess they just got fogged really hard by the Kunkka, but that was a that was a mess. That that was a free kill that just turned into disaster. Ah, yeah. uh, pops the BKB here, turns the fight. Sunset comes through, will be shared amongst a couple of units. The one four three seven still feeling uh. very very strong with uh, the Edict. Sam H just going forward. BKB looks by R. Down for the count as well. 80 seconds without a buyback even. That'd be the opportunity that TNC was waiting for. Just go high ground right now. Look it's not very often. Uh, uh, like X onto Lumic. Into Torrent. Into Bose. Into Swap. Yes, James offers himself up a sacrifice. Gets the four stuff out. The Axe stolen from Rubik. Tornado. EMP. Onto Tim. So. Yay. Yeah, Bounty Hunter's out of mana. What's whatever is he going to do other than press mana boots and continue? So uh, it's not it's not often a team gets a question mark from me, and it's very very rare that a team gets <laughs> a double question mark from me. But execration there with that fight at bottom, and then RR getting caught and using BKB only to die straight after anyway. Yeah, some big mistakes. I don't isolate Terrorblade in the side. All right, but uh, yes, man to Pike like. Uh, Deafening Blast, <laughs> also pushing him out of the base here across that small loop cliff area. Tower's already dead, Axis galore, they're gonna have another boat if they get the mana for it. But uh, EMP says no to land, they'll probably call it quits now. Yeah, just got the Shrines, next Roshan will respawn a couple of seconds as well, so it's a really good timing for TNC. If they want to make use of uh, a couple of extra seconds of the Metamorphosis. And yeah, they'll figure out that this is there now. Uh, Arcane Rune. All handy dandy. Don't strike with all the scout out, just is happening. So, can Execration take a Roche fight? Sure. They can do anything they want to. <laughs> uh, I mean, Doesn't you really sound look, too convinced. They're, they're right. There are still no BKBs on TNC, so Invoker still can solo win a team fight. He just needs to be able to line this up, but without a mobility tool, with no force, no blink on him, it is relatively difficult, so he has to then rely on his Ricky and Beastmaster and Venge to get their control in first, and then Gabby comes in second. So he's like this game-winning hero that has to rely on heroes that are dying very quickly in fights. In the swap back onto Sam H, he yeah, gets the road up to follow. Gonna try and fo split the focus, but look at this the damage, almost just a single Tidebringer. Sam H dies, now TNC looking for more. But now, Execration, get away with murder there. Two double murder, in fact. Raging Potato might be the one to be given up. Throws down some spells, so to stay alive. Dodges the follow-up with a blink. Buyback on some age, so hey. Huge success. Get a few kills. Swap and roar, and Invoker doesn't get touched. You know, Gabby just sits there, pumping out spells. Not the best spells. You know, only catching really the bounty with that Tornado EMP, but after that, Ice Wall, Alacrity, Cold Snap, everything just piles in and compounds TNC, make sure that they can't reinitiate, especially with the Batrider being the one that was swapped and roared, right? Sam H is meant to be able to jump in, force staff Gabby's Lincolns, and get the lasso onto the Invoker, or at the very least catch, you know, someone like the Rubik in the back end to get that free kill, but great awareness from Execration to see the Bat out in the open, get that pick, but yet again, we, uh, we fall around the Roshan pit. That is, that's what they're meant to do. James is the target. Raven Force having fallen for the right clicks. There is eventual illusion to work with, but only for like half a second. 
Uh, that'll be that. 60 seconds on the sidelines. Big guy Roche next on the list with uh, Raven. Not just having the Metamorphosis going, but also Moonshot already eaten. Looking very fast indeed. Sun Strike, yeah, it's just a bit of a tickle. Raw in the back though, okay. I'm trying to get Sam H again if they can bring down his Batwater. He's down for good. He just used buyback, but just our alone does not have enough damage. In fact, Gabby comes through as his teammate dies. But turning to the Thunder, Gabby has to get on out of there. He's being tracked, but 1437, nothing he can do against the BKB. Oshan is still not dead yet. Yeah, and TMC have pushed <laughs> Execration all the way back. There's no way they can contest anymore. Invoke is out of mana, out of spells. He sun strikes once into the pit. But it won't accomplish too much. Lumic tries Rick? to steal. He, he gets does! It. He gets the last hit and the steal! <laughs> what a player! She's still in Terrorblade's inventory and Lumic will fall and die for sin. Same as Raging Potato. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's... It gets a bit of a smiley face. There we go. I don't know if that delays TNC and what they plan to do anyway, no. which is push down no. middle lane. Uh, you still see two heroes down, one uh, without buyback. They'll figure it out sooner rather than later. This game still looks pretty over until unless they can make some crazy plays like this. So it's a free kill. Swap into tornado into EMP and tornadoes and all the spells and the meatballs and does not invoke a spell like Hall, but now Lasso into Torn to the boat. Gonna get James. Not coming back either. All down to Gabby. Swap. Oh yeah, there's still the illusion. I forgot about that. <laughs> James actually still fighting. And uh, defense of Sunder into the cheese eaten from Raven, trying to keep his Kunka alive. But Gabby's gonna get that kill. Meanwhile, the Raw is R comes in from the back. The Sunstrike to follow is actually gonna count it out by his own tornado into the EMP. Follow up stuns from the centaurs. Ravens actually dropping lower and lower and lower. They're trying to track him down. No sound of 120 seconds. Now it's good. About now, this is where he realizes, all right, he fucked up. He needed that thunder right now. As it stands, he'll actually fall. Not what I expected to happen there, to tell you the truth. Invoker is one hell of a hero. Place, yeah. Just chases and chases. This, this Vengeful Spirit illusion, though, it's getting pinged down now, right? The extra, yeah. <laughs> the extra everything. The extra everything is ridiculous. <laughs> you're dead, but it's like you're not dead, you know? XD. Almost as if you're alive. And now... Ooh, Execration gets to push high ground! Ooh! Four very fast. That's another swap onto Sam A. She does not have buyback. He will be dead. Terrorblade. With the buyback, teeping in, and this is where Execration say, Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Let's try it at the very least. The slow coming through. Gabby with the spells. Turns on the BKB. Disarm Terror Blade. The BKB of his own, so he's being kited around as all hell. That does mean that Execration will be able to find the retreat. Just like that, they're back into this game. 44 yeah, minutes in, I, 44 to 39 is the skill score. I, I, I don't know who wins this game, my <laughs> dude. It really has just devolved into Invoker versus Terrorblade. And then the other eight heroes are like, we are helping! <laughs> so, um, why does Raven not buy a BKB in this situation? He has one. What, has he? Oh, yes. has. Uh, how did I miss that? He I mean, just picked it up, okay, yeah, he's, he's okay. Just, yeah, he just got it, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, he's, he's, he didn't use his PKB when Gabby was like sliding on him, so he must not have one, so why doesn't he... He also has the AC queued up, but yeah, that's because he just picked it up in the meantime. He and so yeah, okay, it's, it makes sense, right? That's the item to end all items for him, but now it is Execration's turn to look for high ground that don't need a lot of time to bring down buildings. It's down to TNC to make something happen here. Batrider will be coming back in a couple of seconds. Not enough time to get rid of the melee barracks. Like Raging Potato, creating some chaos and psyching. 1437 away. Dyer's TNC, the melee. Just, yeah, just have to give it up. Don't want to take a 4 and 5 engagement here. Look at how strong that push is. Beastmaster with his little minions, his little summons, he gets the extra neut neutral creep, the forge spirits. Even with a Venjora, just pushing forward aggressively. If, 
if Execration can win a team fight here, they could easily end the game. That's how close this game is. You know, T could TNC is so like big. They see Raven. They have a, they have a ward up here. Oh, that tornado misses. Gets a BKB. Falls away. Whew. That's very scary for a second. BKB also used in Gabby. That was the uh, five second one, I believe. Into the ten second one onto Terra Blade. That is Roar. They get someone else. That is uh, the Kunka. Sunstruck, Raging Potato, dealing with Tims. And uh, before I get the lasso, just just gonna pop into his ult. That's another hero down. Perhaps Execration can force out another buyback. They're still barreling down mid. They wouldn't want Tifa right here. They can grab Mega Creeps almost if the right hero survive. In fact, they're gonna Diamond make a beeline straight for top. Beastmaster blinking in, pops the Necros. Buyback already falls. That's all they wanted. See, they're scrambling. But I don't know if you even feel that you're like losing hard as TNC. They know they can take team fights, especially with the BKB on TB now. They can, you know, press forward. It's just the metamorphosis is on cooldown because they were expecting to have a, a strong defense up against this execution lineup that were, were hard shoving into the base. I don't know if both teams want to kind of wait out for next Roshan because there's still a significant amount of time until then. I, yeah, I think TNC just go and make a move. Like, they're strong enough without Aegis, without Cheese. They can make a play maybe in this bottom lane. It would be nice if top lane was shoved in, though. 1437 seems to be kind of struggling to decide where he heads. Does he push mid? Does he push top? Uh, <laughs> tornadoes and sun strikes being thrown in by <laughs> Gabby from long range. Uh, he did go for the tornado cooldown, the kind of standard uh, for invokers, that minus 16 seconds. Especially yeah. when you have an Octarine on co uh, core on top of it. Very, very strong it's, tower. It's, it's so funny. Every time there's an invoker in, in the game, and uh, I have different co-casters all the time, so no matter what they pick, the co-caster always says, oh yeah, this is standard. And, and uh, Tornado cooldown is standard, but then here we definitely blast, oh yeah, that's standard too from a different oh, really? co-caster. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's actually is like... Tornado is guaranteed yeah. standard, I'm telling you. I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But I know plenty of people who think otherwise. Now, you it's sometimes so bring out AoE Defting Blast against, like, Illusion Heroes, you know, against CK, against PL, or something like that, if you want to make some sick plays. But Tornado cooldown, it's like, you know, down to seven seconds cooldown on Tornado with Octarine called with that talent. It, yep. It's insane. I'm with you there. It's my opinion as well. I'm just saying, okay, it's... There's like very different opinions on that. But yeah. It's definitely going to be helpful considering the way these fights have been going. And like, Execration, they want to have that ability to keep chasing, to keep just throwing out spell after spell after spell after they get the uh, initial pickoff. With with Kunker, what does Ghost Ship Fleet mean? You get like three boats or some shit. You get three boats? Uh, he didn't get it though. Sad. Or oh, does he die before X happens? Oh no, he doesn't. Alright. Creation. I have to defend bottom. Only Gabby here for now. It does have the Lincoln Sphere. Slam Age has to force off to counter it out. If he's quick enough, and he is. Gets off that spell. Follow up with the boat. <laughs> oh, what? Uh. There was yeah, a hero there. I, s I swear there was a hero. Um, 1700 damage. <laughs> they find one four three seven all the way in the back, but okay. TB battling through backdoor region not ideal. We put a tornado. They get the track of a raging potato. Does not have his ultimate, so he's just straight up dead. Now Raven turns on the BKB and execration. They have to run. They have to hide. James slowed down quite a bit, though. He will swap himself back to with a creep or something. Even put anyone else in trouble. Tornado. Ah. Uh, I'll miss. They did force out the buyback on the invoker though. They did get the kill on Raging Potato. So it's a bit of a damage output, scouting potential, and more importantly, invoker has to be very, very careful right now. One more death on him will probably just mean game, unless TNC has already taken crippling damage himself. And they get another tier 3. Cuckoo needs to keep splitting these waves though. Oh, there's a DD rune that spawned up at top. Gabby wants to scout Roshan. It's not up for another 15 seconds. We'll have to wait this one out. 
perhaps send a fortress field in there. Would be a really, really good timing. It's, that's the third Roche now, isn't it? The Aegis Cheese and Refresher Shard going to yeah. come out. and That's actually, uh, like, would you give the Refresher Shard to Invoker or perhaps even to the Beastmaster for, like, uh, double raw and stuff like that? Oh. Beastmaster, he finds Kuku. He has some help available. But, uh, well, that's uh, that hero. BKBs just to stay safe, not a tornado onto Sam H. Just keep them away. Execration. They don't want to push their luck any further. Sam H, though. Oh, oh, the swap on the, one of the catapults. <sighs> Pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. Killed the Kunker. He's dead for over 100 seconds. How are we looking for buybacks now, anyway? Kunker on cooldown for three minutes. Yeah. TBs is coming back now, so at least they've cycled those buybacks decently well. And I don't think Execration can really go and make a play on any of the buildings with all these lanes shoved out towards the river or across the river. Roshan scouted by RR, but that's still a difficult prospect, even if you are 5v4. But it all depends on how ballsy TNC feel, right? If they're just going to go and, and split push these waves, try and keep bottom towards the racks and that radiant base, then fine. You can go and take Roshan. But it's scouted out immediately by a TB illusion. Oh, just look at the damage, though. So, Roshan so is just immediately dead. They just cheese refresher shard. Beastmaster has a slot open, and there it is. Double raw, ladies and gentlemen. Potentially game winning here. Yeah, but he already has Octarine and stuff like that, and he has plenty of spells to throw out, even without a refresher. Also, get double raw and double beasts and stuff like that. It's double BKB. Well, down to five seconds, so now up to ten for one fight. T and C, what do you do? You're gonna defend your base, apparently. Give over some moon shots to your friends, Raven. He's had his eaten for a long, long time, so at least the AC queued up. But what item does he really want to give up? Like the fuse blade at this point? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a difficult one, right? Maybe even just the hurricane pike. He's not been using it too often recently. The purge is nice, you know, diffusal is nice for the purge, the damage that comes out of it. But I'm, I'm not sure even. In terms of diffusal not being able to be upgraded, it's only 20 agility and 10 intelligence. Yeah, that's Hurricane true. Pike gives you more than that and then some. So. And the, I think it's not an issue of damage for Terror Blade at this point. It's an issue of RIA. To try and stay alive and actually try and close to people, I, I don't know. It's, I don't know, it's, but it's like very hard at the sleep. Diffusal blade is, you know, like damage on your illusions as well with a yeah. with a mana burn or yeah. mana break even. It's a it's a difficult one to toss up. Well, one person in the game has buyback and it's the TB. No one else has money or time for it apparently. Yeah. Thirty seconds on the con so it's going to be up sooner or rather than later. But that's about it. Actually, very important though. Kuku still like well, that's damage here too. He has, uh, yeah, it's a second crit as well. There it is. Still lasso <laughs> onto the ventral spirit. Good early start here, but gets X back to the front with the Yules. Like they want to be tracking him down and a swap back. Illusion. Next one on the list. They're gonna do the same thing again. And uh, they will be able to execrate. They do not use any resources to try and turn things around. Ragey Potato gets. <laughs> How's he so fast? The haste rune. Almost as fast speed. as uh, the new Mercedes Benz E Class. Hey! Uh huh. Got him. So, invoke a TP to this creep wave as they're pushing bot lane. Kunker kills the creep, and Invoker is stuck mid tier 3 inside his base. Oh no. So, like, TNC knows exactly what's happening here, right? Invoker's not in the fight, let's go, kill, 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 let's slay some people. They get the Venge, and now they're trying to push high ground, but you still have to be very wary of this Invoker with Aegis, with BKB. You can't just hard commit for this unless Look you get a R. sick blink initiation. Ah, uh, it's gonna split push top. SMH will actually fall, so he tried to make that play, but he's. It backfires! Mineski, well, that's a glyph force out. Tier 3 is already dead. RR, just gonna leave his creeps in there. <laughs> Mineski? <sighs> what is this? The courier? Alright, that falls. Rich Potato, I'm just uh, looking for some uh, more things to do. 
Yeah, good defense. Only some damage on the melee racks, it's gonna regenerate. You take another tier 3 of your own. This threat, I mean, uh, TNC, they were. thought they were, f uh, they were cheeky with the X back on 1437, so he could push out middle lane and still come back to the fight. Okay, but, okay. Uh, back guys. region was still disabled. Diffusal Blade does still have Purge. It's lit the active is literally called Purge. <laughs> like, you can't flame for this. I know it doesn't dispel anymore. Yeah. I know it doesn't have charges. But the active of Diffusal Blade is still called Purge. Please. Please. <laughs> I, I beg. <laughs> well, might have to Purge chat a little bit. Next to the <laughs> Wasn't such a monumental task. I would maybe do it, but hey. Read the patch notes, Dragon Drop. How dare you? What? <laughs> Don't read patch notes. Uh, that's for scrubs. Yeah. Right, Invoker gets to join the fight now. They've got Aegis for Let's how long? Top. 20 seconds? Aura's trying to split push top. He pops his BKB, but it's bottom lane where the real push is happening. Okay, it's chipping away. Double catapult. One of them with alacrity. Is that Rubik fire? Yeah, it is. It's like, what am I? What's happening? He got the... Where's that? Conjure image. Not particularly useful. Um, he just expires. Still cheese, still refresher shot. Top lane, they're gonna go. RR had the BKB from the refresher shot. Another roll, but they've lost eventual spirit. And swells the illusion. Oh, we might I mean, get cheese off they got that kill, but... Uh, nah, they're all dead. They're all dying. Not quite. They got ranged bottom. You lose like Not three heroes for it. Yeah, not the best. I mean, Aegis expires. Refresher shard was used up at top, right? Yeah. I still hold the cheese as Raven uses Refresher. He wants meta to go again. Oh, nice. So TB buys Refresher, uses his meta to defend base, and now they're pushing hard bot lane. He's got BKB and meta ready to go immediately after this one expires. TNC are ready for... End game now. Three heroes dead. Do we have any buybacks across them? Vengeance 40 gold away. Beastmaster is 18. So it looks like they might get enough money to buy back by the time TNC reaches their base, but they won't have time to set up. So Gabby on this invoker has to do a lot of work to keep them at bay. But they're already knocking on the doors of the racks in the tier threes. Double seconds on Beastmaster. About 20 more on the Venge with the other way the gold works. And there it is. The last on to Gabby. This is such a big kill. Raven in the middle. It'll take some work, but they bring down Gabby. Instant buyback from him as well as the Beast. Whenever they got it, but they're just rampaging through them now. Another buyback. And TNC, they haven't taken any damage just yet. That's the first roar this particular fight. Gonna get a second. But there it is. Gabby is using some spells. Raven does not have the BKB left. He's actually quite vulnerable, but 1437, not so much. Po shows off his own. So does RR. Rage of Potato dies again. He's just trying to take Chaos in the back, but again, nobody's died yet on the side of TNC. Maybe it'll track now. Yield Scepter, follow up Sunstrike, but he's too fast, too many four stars. X back onto Lumic. Sandwich blinks forward. Yields, tornadoes. Everyone's being lifted up and down and up and down into the air. Swap back onto Cuckoo. X goes every which way, but Execration cannot find the finisher. Another Split Earth, another Tornado. Gabby just doing his best to keep his teammates alive as well as himself, but now the lasso after the sun, they're bringing down the half health. This might just be it. Gabby will fall, Raven with a double kill. The Rex will drop, and they won't force out to GG right now. They don't bother with Megas. They know that Gabby is not coming back. Another swap, James. RR, they're still fighting. They're still trying to do what they can. The Fountain gets two shots off, but... They're all over, but they're crying. And there it is. Raging Potato. He's the one to call it. He's looking onto it from his deathbed. What a weird uh, game. The Ancient explodes. Oh, it was. It was only game one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.